Warning, this content may include material that could be distressing for some. Discretion is advised. Michelle's 19th birthday unfolds within the dimly illuminated recesses of the underground city that has harbored her for the last 13 years. The atmosphere hangs heavy with stagnation, and the frigid walls resound with the subdued murmurs of subterranean existence. Awakening to the muted hum of life beneath the Earth's surface, Michelle finds herself cloaked in a profound melancholy. Birthdays, in this shadowed catacomb, serve as poignant reminders of the life she forfeited. A life meant to flourish beneath the open expanse of the sky. A cataclysmic event, 13 years ago, on her sixth birthday, caused Michelle's world to fall apart. A calamity, still shrouded in mystery, compelled her and her parents to forsake their idyllic existence above ground for the secret depths beneath New York City. Her father, a government contractor pivotal in the creation of the subterranean refuge now sheltering 10,000 souls, orchestrated their escape. The underground city, established for security, imposes a heavy price on freedom. With residents barred from exploring the surface, they find themselves leading lives akin to those within prison walls, confined to the depths below while deliberate measures are taken to keep them intentionally oblivious to the true extent of the danger lurking above ground. The surface world is now supplanted by an ink-black void made of a substance as dense as olive oil, a disquieting expanse where the laws of physics relinquish their coherence, and space-time gyrates to an erratic cadence. Venturing beyond the city's confines is a perilous journey into the unknown, an expedition from which none has returned. Michelle's birthdays metamorphose into annual descents into the abyss of her own sorrow. Each passing year not only marks the inexorable progression of time, but also serves as a soul-stirring recollection of her pilfered youth, and the day her world unraveled. To contend with the isolation, her mother encouraged her to keep a diary, a chronicle of daily life, thoughts, and emotions. This diary emerged as Michelle's sanctuary, a portal to a daydream realm that lies beyond the cavernous walls and whatever evil dwells in the external world. And so today Michelle has sought refuge in the serene seclusion of her small room. The gentle radiance of a lone lamp bathes the time-worn pages of her diary in a warm glow. As she poises her pen to write, she contemplates the echoes of her past and the impenetrable darkness that now engulfs her existence. October 17, 2074 Dear Diary, she commences, her pen etching the contours of her emotions. Today hasn't been a good day. Not that the previous ones were any better, but today has been the worst for me so far. As predicted by one of our scientists a few years ago, the anomaly outside has begun affecting our subterranean haven or, I should rather say, hell. Bizarre occurrences have been persisting for over two months now, showing no signs of abatement. Last week, my friend Kenzo's father inexplicably vanished into thin air while dining in the cafeteria. Kenzo witnessed the event and is utterly devastated. Others, too, have vanished in a similar manner or transformed into grotesque, unrecognizable entities before succumbing to agonizing deaths. Some have fused with one another, even three or four at a time. Witnessing one such incident myself two weeks ago has left me sleepless. I wept for an entire day and night, the horrifying scene replaying in my mind. Portions of the city have vanished too, along with entire neighborhoods and their inhabitants, as though they were never constructed. Strangely, some of us seem to have lost all memory of the vanished individuals, as if they never existed. I am uncertain if I, too, have lost memories of people once close to me. Residents of Sector 11 reported being trapped in time loops, prompting the evacuation and sealing of the entire sector by city authorities. Mr. and Mrs. White, an elderly couple no one recalls ever seeing before, are among the evacuees. 
they recount a chilling tale of being ensnared in a time loop for 47 years, claiming to have had a son and two daughters, who are now puzzlingly absent, with no record of their existence whatsoever. Gravity, too, has been capricious, with individuals floating in the air before abruptly plummeting to the ground, some meeting their demise upon impact. Air quality is steadily deteriorating, and rationing of food and water is imperative, due to substances discovered in them which cause death or horrifying bodily transformations. Eight days ago, Mr. Peterson, our neighbor, met a gruesome man in his shower, assaulted by water that, as it cascaded from the shower head, morphed into long, flesh-eating worms. I am unsure how much time remains before the culmination of these unsettling events. I yearn for this to be a mere nightmare, to awaken and find myself on my sixth birthday, where everything is as it once was. Above all, I have always longed to be a mother one day. Now I know, that day, will never. The pen halted mid-sentence. April 13, 2075 Another subterranean city, nestled beneath the German soil, witnesses a gathering of individuals, some dressed in military uniforms, others in pristine white lab coats. They assemble around a large circular table in a room reminiscent of a Cold War era war room, listening intently as General Townsend reads aloud the disconcerting passages from the diary of a young woman, whose harrowing experiences are chronicled in worn pages. That, gentlemen, was her final entry, General Townsend announces, concluding his reading and placing the diary on the expansive table before him. He continues, this diary, retrieved from the surface by the lone survivor of Echo 3 Squad under my command, documents the young woman's plight. Unfortunately, the diary ended up lodged inside the survivor's abdomen, in a nightmarish turn of events, necessitating surgical extraction. Regrettably, the soldier succumbed merely four days post-surgery. An eerie hush pervades the room as the general speaks. The occupants, visibly disturbed, exchange glances of pure horror, some shaking their heads in denial and disbelief. Dr. Nolan, slowly coming to terms with the gravity of the revelations, poses the inevitable question. What are your conclusions, General, based on the accounts in that diary? General Townsend responds with a touch of irritation. My conclusions are quite apparent, I would say. The situation is rapidly deteriorating. The events detailed in the diary, the ordeals that poor girl endured, are beginning to manifest in our city, as you all are well aware. Three months ago, when the phenomena started to unfold, we collectively chose to shield our citizens from the truth. Yet, we cannot bury our heads in the sand. It's all laid bare in that damn diary. There is no escape. Wherever Michelle has gone, we're all going too. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in, your being here is truly appreciated. Take care, stick around for more strange stories, and see you real soon in another timeline.